Hi everyone! It seems to be a recurring theme in my videos, this idea of toxic shame versus productive or healthy shame. So I thought it would be useful to explore this idea. What exactly do I mean by toxic shame? And how can shame be productive? Vegans are often accused of shaming people for eating meat, even those of us who condemn shaming in the colloquial sense. I was watching a video by Obese to Beast the other day, and he hit the nail on the head. If you've never heard of him, his channel focuses on health and fitness and helping people who want to lose weight lose weight. I really enjoy his commentary on body positivity because I think he has a very balanced and level-headed approach. This is relevant because this theme comes up a lot in the body posi sphere as well. What exactly is fat shaming? Obese to Beast vehemently condemns fat shaming, yet he's often accused of fat shaming. Why is this? I think this clip sums it up perfectly. And so that's why, I mean, I've said so many times, like, body shaming and like calling people fat because you think that it's going to help them lose weight for the vast majority of people it's not going to help you know there's always a couple people in here whenever i say that like well you know i was motivated by tough love blah blah, blah. and maybe you were but again the vast majority of people that's not going to help them so if your real goal is to help people you know lose weight or be healthy and maintain healthy lives and, uh, and understand that they can do it i think there are better ways than just shouting at someone and trying to make them lose weight i i really don't think that, that is a super helpful uh, way to go about it. So congrats, if you're body shaming people, you're not actually motivating them. You're just making them also hate themselves now. Okay, but the one thing I do want to say, and this is important, is uh, body shaming gets thrown around a lot, and I think that it's it's gotten to a point now where if you at all talk about you know the ill effects of being severely overweight for a long period of time, that is now being like construed as like fat phobic or body shaming. And I think that that is different when you're talking about those things, right? When I, I've made videos where, or even like, like I think a lot of these things that she is saying, I agree with, but it's, it's what people think body shaming is, right? Like I've been, I've been called a body shamer by posting a before and after picture, right? I've been called a body shamer by showing, oh, I used to fit into this shirt. Now I don't anymore. And so I think that, Again, while I agree with what she's saying, I think that there are a lot of people that are taking what she's saying and pushing it a little bit further to where it's like, so am I allowed to do anything at all with weight loss or talk about it at all without being considered body shaming or fat phobic? And that's where the uh, that's where the issues, I think, really lie. Um, it's it's not as as far as like, you know, people. You, yes, you shouldn't go around body shaming people and being like walking around and being like, you're disgusting. You're gross. You're going to die soon. But at the same time, if I'm posting a picture of myself that's a before and after, is that body shaming someone else? And I would say I don't think that it is. So what is shame and what does it mean to shame someone? Shame is defined as a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior and as a verb to make someone feel ashamed. Colloquially, shame has a negative connotation. Relating back to what John said, what I would consider shaming in the colloquial sense differs from what others might consider shaming. To me, shaming someone for eating meat implies denigrating them. It involves name-calling or attacking their character or appearance. But if I happen to evoke feelings of shame by shining a light on the immorality of exploiting animals, which is unavoidable, <laughs> I don't view this as shaming. Oftentimes, feelings of shame are suppressed and take a different form. In a Vox article titled Why Shame is Good, a psychotherapist weighs in. In my work, I often encounter people who are grappling with shame in some form. My clients deflect feelings of shame by embracing blame, contempt, and indignation. They need to instead face the shame head on if they are to grow. Some people seem to think that if something you said caused someone else to feel shame, then you are responsible for their feelings, and you're a shamer. But this is not always the case, and I don't know a single person who holds this view consistently. For example, many social justice advocates can attest that even politely explaining to someone why something they said was racist often evokes defensiveness, aka white fragility. Even if your intention is to inform them, not shame them, they feel attacked. Let's say they said something along the lines of, 
I don't see color or all lives matter. And you calmly and rationally explain how this type of rhetoric is racist. You avoid calling them a racist because you know they have good intentions and you want to keep their defenses down. Despite your best efforts, they react angrily and defensively. They claim that liberals like you calling everyone racist is the real problem. And then they go on a rant about cancel culture. In this scenario, you said something that caused another person to feel shame in the form of blame, contempt, and indignation. Are you in the wrong? It's funny that people will get upset at vegans for supposedly shaming people for eating meat, failing to realize that they're deflecting feelings of shame by showing contempt for outspoken vegans. To truly feel shame requires consciousness of wrongdoing. On some level, they recognize that they're in the wrong, but in order to maintain their denial of wrongdoing, they must suppress feelings of shame by accusing vegans of being in the wrong. This is all incredibly ironic, because they're accusing vegans of shaming others, which they insist is wrong, while they simultaneously attempt to shame vegans into silence. And unfortunately, it works. A lot of vegans feel ashamed to speak out loudly and proudly for the animals, because it is socially unacceptable to do so. Now we have to ask, is it wrong to shame people? There are several things to consider. One, the harm caused. 2. The egregiousness, 3. The tone of the messenger, and 4. The intentions of the messenger. Number 1 is paramount. It is clearly wrong to shame someone for factors such as sexual orientation or gender expression, because these things don't cause harm to others. Women should not be shamed for choosing not to wear makeup or remove their body hair, because the gender norms we've created are completely arbitrary. How someone chooses to present themselves is a personal choice that harms no one. But when it comes to behaviors that cause harm, like eating animal products, there is a valid reason to feel ashamed if you partake in the system of cruelty and violence. Whether or not the act of shaming is wrong in this context depends on two through four. Number two, the egregiousness. An ex-vegan is judged more harshly than the average carnist who has yet to make the connection, because they're aware of the atrocities they're supporting. Not knowing and not caring is seen as less egregious than knowing and not caring. Some other things to consider here are, is this person spreading misinformation to a massive audience? Are they now promoting the carnivore diet and partnering with companies like ButcherBox? Do they seem to care at all about the victims of their choices? If someone came out and said, I'm ashamed to say I fell off the wagon, I've slipped up too many times that I'd be lying if I said I was a vegan and not a flexitarian, I know there's no excuse for animal abuse, and I would like to eventually call myself vegan again, I bet they would receive a lot more support than scorn. It's also important to consider the social context. A neo-Nazi is judged more harshly by most vegans than an ex-vegan because of the cultural environment we live in. Committing an immoral act that is socially taboo is a lot more indicative of someone's character than committing an immoral act that is not taboo. As the animal liberation movement grows, consuming animal products will become more and more taboo, and thus more and more egregious. At a certain point in the cultural zeitgeist, it becomes productive to outright shame people for their complicity. But of course, it's hard to draw the line. Generally speaking, I'd say we should condemn actions, not people. But some people have such consistently poor behavior that it's totally reasonable to shame them. This type of shame promotes social cohesion, whereas toxic shame does not. Number three, the messenger's tone. Our tone should reflect the egregiousness of the behavior. When we judge criticism as harsh, our disagreement lies in our assessment of egregiousness. So the question is, does the tone match the situation? Number four, the messenger's intentions. John's intention with his channel is to help people who want to lose weight. He posts before and after pictures to inspire people, not to make people feel bad about themselves. Given the nature of the internet, these photos will inevitably make some people feel bad about themselves. But their emotional response is not John's fault. 
Of course, as content creators, we have a certain degree of responsibility, and we should consider how our posts will be received by others. We can't just thoughtlessly post whatever is on our mind, and then when we get pushback, pin it all on people being too sensitive. But since it is literally impossible to please everyone, posting content is a balancing act. Having watched a fair amount of John's content, it's clear that he does carefully consider the message he's putting out, and throws in many disclaimers and caveats. In my opinion, he performs the balancing act of being kind and compassionate without sacrificing the integrity of his message very well. Ultimately, it's a choice between appeasing people or watering down your message. And I believe that sharing the hard truth produces more long-term value than avoiding controversy. If John were to stop posting before and after pictures, he may successfully avoid upsetting people. But in doing so, he would decrease his reach and thus his ability to inspire people to make healthy lifestyle changes. His intention behind posting these photos is not to shame people, but to spread a message of empowerment. In the same way, I choose to post YouTube videos and speak up for animals, knowing that some people will interpret my words as shaming them for their dietary choices. To avoid this, I would have to water down my message or shut up entirely. Either way, I would be doing a disservice to the animals. My intention is not to shame people, but to do the animals justice. This notion of intent versus impact is referenced a lot in social justice circles. We should be focused on the impact of someone's words and actions rather than their intentions. I see the value in this, but I think that some people's analysis of impact is short-sighted. We should look at impact at the macro level rather than just the individual level. Someone could say, I know your intention was not to shame, but the impact was that they felt shamed by you. That's a valid thing to consider, but so is the impact of staying silent. What is the net impact if I water down my message and promote reducitarianism instead of abolition? Based on these four considerations, I would define toxic shame as shaming people for behaviors that don't cause harm, being too harsh in tone, and having cruel intentions. I won't deny that some vegans engage in toxic shaming, but most vegans and vegan organizations understand that berating people is not effective advocacy. We try our best to communicate in a way that is calm and non-judgmental. Yet still, non-vegans will react defensively to the argument that veganism is a moral imperative. They believe that promoting the abolition of animal exploitation, and therefore imposing veganism on others, is shaming in and of itself. And going back to the dictionary definition, perhaps it is a form of shaming, as it evokes feelings of shame. But this would be an example of productive shame, whereas calling people disgusting animal abusers would be toxic shame. It is toxic shame, not shame, that we should condemn. The last thing I wanted to explore is where shame comes from. It may stem from internalized oppression or societal stigma. In that case, the solution to alleviating shame is to fight to dismantle the oppression and stigma, both within yourself and society. But oftentimes, what people label as shame may more accurately be described as guilt. According to Wikipedia, the boundaries between concepts of shame, guilt, and embarrassment are not easily delineated. Shame arises from a violation of cultural or social values, while guilt feelings arise from violations of one's internal values. Thus, shame arises when one's defects are exposed to others, and results from the negative evaluation, whether real or imagined, of others. Guilt, on the other hand, comes from one's own negative evaluation of oneself. For instance, when one acts contrary to one's values or idea of oneself. Thus, it might be possible to feel ashamed of thought or behavior that no one actually knows about, since one fears their discovery. And conversely, to feel guilty about actions that gain the approval of others. If this is the case, the solution to alleviating this negative feeling you're experiencing is to change your behavior to align with your values. Ultimately, shame and guilt come from a place of insecurity. 
When you are confident in yourself and your beliefs, you're virtually immune to shame and guilt. You cannot guilt trip someone who stands firm in their belief that they're in the right. If you're angry that a vegan is guilt tripping you, maybe you should assess why you feel guilty. Like the word shame, guilt tripping has a negative connotation. But whether or not inducing feelings of guilt is wrong depends on the context. In conclusion, shame can be toxic and harmful, but it can also be a force for good, as it is necessary for social cohesion. This is illustrated by the phrase, no shame, having both positive and negative connotations. We'll often describe someone as having no shame as a compliment. They don't care what other people think. They don't let the judgment of others hold them back. In this context, having no shame is synonymous with being bold and confident. But we'll also describe people like Donald Trump as having no shame in a way that's very concerning. No shame in this context is synonymous with having no moral compass. With social cohesion and justice as the goal, when we're talking about the psychologically harmful effects of shame, we should be specific and not throw the baby out with the bathwater, because a world without shame would be pretty chaotic. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down below, and stay tuned for next week. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no meat now How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan, man How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them